creaky in my chair yet. Ooh, I might have even a little bit of sore throat. What's all that about? Okay. So, kids, so obviously, uh, I to say obviously, within our society at the moment, there is this huge idea uh, which comes along with uh, generations. I'm just checking the microphone I'm looking, uh, which comes along with generational divides between millennials and baby boomers and Generation Z and Generation N. There's all these little things, and there's a word which keeps coming up, which is offended. And this whole idea of being offended as a person or as a culture, and that everything's offensive, and that you're insulting someone and all this kind of stuff. And I'm not here to discuss that. I'm not. Because that's a whole other podcast, and there's enough people discussing that. It's it's very much in conversation at the moment as a thing. And it is something which I've worried about with podcasts. I've, I've touched on quite serious subjects in quite a few podcasts. I've had guests on, and we've, we've discussed things at length. Um, and that's why I, I like doing the longer podcasts, because it gives you a chance to talk around a subject. It's... it's when you make something individual, for instance, with these podcasts, well, the ones which are 20, 30 minutes long, it's very easy to, to be soundbited uh, to a level where you could be taken out of context. But with a longer, hour-long podcast, you have a chance to, to discuss with a guest and to get to know them as a person. And that's, that, to me, that's very important. To me, that's very important of... of understanding where they're coming from and why their opinion is how it is and you know it's context it's all about context and and so that's a huge thing at the moment that's a that's a big thing for people and people are very passionate about their ideas and other people get very on edge about people having ideas and they worry about insulting someone and some people don't worry about insulting someone because they assume they're insulting everybody and uh, I want you to discuss this idea of trying to present an opinion which I can essentially boil down to a singular sentence if I must one second sorry I'm just taking a drink okay so it essentially can be boiled down to this idea that you can't tell someone to feel bad and expect them to. Because those are two entirely different things. So, what what occurred to me recently, not recently, I had this idea ages ago, was watching someone try to explain their opinion and not understanding why someone wouldn't understand their opinion. And I think that's a huge problem within this this whole culture which we have at the moment, is that people have become very passionate about their ideas, but don't really have a clue on how to present their idea in a way which would make people communicate. And so instead, present it in a very a kind of aggressive, or less than aggressive, but very, I don't know, less tactile way than they could present an idea. And that that's what causes all these conflicts and that occurs from both sides of the spectrum from the extremely liberal oh, liberal <laughs> what the hell is that it's from the extre extremely liberal to the extremely right wing it's it's people trying to present ideas where they're not quite sure on how to present the idea because essentially if you present an idea which you know is going to conflict with someone else then you have to have some level of skill of, of of saying or showing what you're trying to say in a way that might change in a person's opinion. Essentially, you can't say to someone, so for instance, you have someone who says, orange juice is the best flavor in the world. If someone presented you with that as their, their whole world, and there was a whole culture built around this idea of orange juice, if you suddenly came along with black currant, I just realized I'm drinking juice, and that may be why these, these fruits are coming into my head, but you, you came along with black currant and said no, Black currant is the best flavor in the world. My mother would agree, disagree because she hates the black currant flavor. So this is maybe me, perhaps, trying to in, 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 you know, entice her into drinking black currant. But if you came along with that, you couldn't expect someone whose entire world had been built around the idea of orange to instantly change. To instantly go, you know what? Damn, you're right. 
especially if they've never tried it as well especially if they've never even had the inclination to touch or experience said black currant they would instead just be like no orange is the best always has been there is no no other flavors and they'd be less willing to try black currant because it would change their world and people resent change they hate change People really aren't flexible with the whole experiencing change thing, and that's something which it takes time to learn, and that's something which I'm I'm quite lucky that I'm I'm able to learn and able to to be quite flexible in my life, um, and yeah, that's that essentially that's the crux of the idea, which leads me to another point. So, I hate charity adverts, mainly because charity adverts have zero effect on me. Because they are doing what I've just suggested. The whole idea of a charity advert is to raise awareness of an idea and to get you to donate. So they present you with an idea, starvation, you know, um, disabilities, whatever you want to, whatever you want to advertise. They present you with an idea. They expect you to feel bad and therefore want to give money because it's soliciting with guilt. Now, I hate that. And I hate it when people come to your door and they give you this idea because they they are instantly trying to interfere with your life. And I realize that it is for a good cause, but the way the idea is progressed is not one which I'm receptive to. And it's not one a lot of people are receptive to. They're basically aiming for this kind of niche market of people who are receptive to just emotional triggers. Now, there is a better way to do this. There is a better way to to present an idea. It's, it's going to never be possible to just give someone an idea and say, yes, this is how you should feel. Especially because that's, that's a whole other crux of the idea. You're essentially, you're entirely trying to tell someone how to think and feel. And that is not an impression you will ever want to take from a person. Imagine if someone came into your home and uninvited and just suggested, not even suggested, just told you that you had to think and feel this way, regardless of the subject. And would you want to do that? No, you wouldn't. You'd instantly become defensive because that's how we work as human beings. And that's, that's everything we are, is that when something we have within our life is there and someone questions it, you become defensive because it's part of your life. Because even if it's wrong, something in your head says, Oh, crap. I've been doing this wrong for 28 years. That means I failed at 28 years. And it doesn't mean you failed at 28 years of your life. Essentially, all it means is that you haven't had the opportunity to learn this information. You can learn this information. You can involve it in your life and make a change. And it also doesn't have to change your entire life. It's changing a very minute percentile of your life. It's changing... <laughs> Essentially, it could change nothing. It's just new information. It's just us taking on board extra information. And that's that's kind of the thing. And it requires this balance between the person presenting the information and the person receiving the information for them to think, oh, damn, maybe, you know, maybe there is more to everything we're kind of discussing and, 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 and dealing with. essentially becomes a problem with Facebook that this is why people get so irritated by um, what would it be called social justice warriors I guess P keyboard warriors is that you're presenting information in a way which c it has no balance there's no there's no work around it there's no language which comes with it in order to present that information it's just boom, here's information, this is how you should feel, and this is how you should think. You should think about it, and it comes across as really condescending. And it might not even be condescending, it might just be you going, oh, you know what, more people should know about this. But that's how it comes across. And I think it's important that people realize why people aren't receptive to ideas. I always find it interesting when someone does get angry about someone not taking up about taking up their, their thoughts and their opinions. Um... 
And it's, it's frustration. That's all it is. It's, it's venting frustration. It's people looking at something and going, why? This is so obvious. Why aren't you believing me? I, ca I can't understand it. And it's because it's how information is presented. And even if you present information in the correct way, in a way which is malleable and receptive and would make someone change or, or question their own beliefs, there's a chance that won't work. There's a chance they will just make a, a conscious decision to say, you know what? No, I, I can't. I'm, I'm not capable and I don't want to. I, you know, that's, that's just something you have to accept after a while. There's something innate about us having to go, oh, well, damn, I guess I'll just keep trying to push the information and, and trying to present it in a way which is, is forthright and, and, and li live through that expectation. I mean, I have many ideas. And I know people aren't receptive to them. Because why would they be? Why would they want to take advice for some from some randoms? Even this, even this conversation right now. Even us sitting here going, you know what? There's a perfect way to present information. No. You know, this is a random podcast on the internet. With some random guy sat in a random house within the UK. There's nothing to say you have to take this on board. All I can do is present you with information and let you let you let you kind of talk around it, and, and let myself talk around it to know to know where we're at. What you need to consider when whenever presenting anything, whenever giving anyone an idea, is that they have a whole life attached to them, and I think this is something which a lot of people forget very easily: is that everyone has an entire life entire world of experiences connected to them and whilst you have your own entire life and your entire world of experiences those could be extremely different they could be absolute chug and cheeks they could be very very similar but you don't know that and how they reacted to the, your experiences even if they were very similar will not be the same it, it, it can't be because we're all chaotic balls of chemicals it's, it's almost impossible to have an identical upbringing. And the chemicals within us may not make you react in the same way as a identical upbringing would make you react. So when you present someone with a thought, opinion, a fact, whatever you want to take, whatever you want to call it, a movement, you have to consider that what you're presenting to. There's a... Um, it's a whole theory with uh, selling something, and I, it's, it, it kind of works along these lines. Of you can't sell someone something unless they want to be sold to. That's that's the basic. If you can sell someone to someone who doesn't want to be sold to, that's genuine. Generally, not a sale. That is a scam. And that's the whole idea behind a, a pyramid scheme: is that if you can't sell them the thing you want or to sell such as a timeshare, you know, um, you sell them something else and then throw in the thing you want to sell. So when you sell a timeshare, you're not selling a timeshare, you're selling the holiday, the experience, the lifestyle, this idea that they want, which, which is why people fall for it. And that's why so many people are drafted into it. When you sell something which is worth nothing and is going to be a detriment to a person, you have to adjust it adjust the view so you're selling something which would benefit them so when you when someone sells something for real and it's an actual product the person has to want to be receptive to be, sell, to be sold to and there's two types of ways of doing this with i remember going to a job interview so way back when before i i think this was before i was even living in lincoln uh this was i, I finished uni and i moved back home and then I made plans to move back to Lincoln. And I went for a job interview with, I think it was Sony. Um, but it was like Sony Sony Center. So it was something, they sell TVs and, and, and sound systems and all those kinds of things. And I went for this job interview. And part of the job interview was that I had to sell to them. I had to sell them a chair. And this was the first time I'd ever been in a retail job interview, by the way. So I completely caught off by guard by role-playing. Uh, <laughs> 
and it was the most awkward interaction you could ever imagine. There was me and these two lovely women who were just sat in this room, and it was very small. It was a very small room, and we were all boiling. We were just cooking because it was the middle of summer. And I don't think any of us wanted to be there. There was an old lady, and she just looked unhappy about everything which was going on. And I don't think it was me, because when the guy before me came out of the interview, she still looked unhappy. And I just have to assume that she did not want to be doing those interviews. The, the other lady, she she seemed quite pleasant. Pleasant with the whole situation. And it may have been chalk and cheese, and it may have been a complete interview technique, but it was it was like Laurel and Hardy of, of, of just complete dissatisfaction and kind of shy naivety. Um of the whole process but during the process i had to sell to them so i had to sell to this to this um to this older lady who was not happy about the situation and she 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 played the wrong but she did not want to be sold to now they told me something that kind of benefited me um with this whole idea of selling was that when you're attempting to sell to someone if if you're selling in a store there's a whole benefit that if a person has come to that store to look at something, then there is potential that they would like to buy something. So you instantly have an in that they might like to buy something, or they're at least looking to purchase something maybe sometime, or they just want to know more about the product. So you've already got an in, which is why salespeople will approach you when you go to a store. I know it's awful and you hate it, especially if you just go into browse, but that is a reality. They will, they will approach you because that is their job. That is what they get paid to do. If they weren't doing that, they wouldn't have a job. That's I, I can appreciate that. So please don't be rude to salespeople or people in retail, unless they're rude to you in the first place. That's 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 a general. Rule. But so if someone comes to your store and you're automatically you've already gone in. Now, if someone doesn't come to your store and just happens to be near your store and you need to sell to them, then that is a whole other problem because you're never going to be able to sell to them because first off you have to get them into your store which is how advertising works to get past that first barrier to get them to think oh well, I, might want to want to, I want, might want to go to that store I might want to go buy that used car you know and that's 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 a whole mix of you've got to get past that first barrier so regardless of how things occur you're going to always have that first barrier of they, if they don't want to be sold to, they're not going to be sold. If someone is life and they have, have, have this constructed life, even if this life's not perfect, it's still theirs. It's still connected to however many years of experience within life, however many life opportunities, families, memories, all of these things. They have this constructed world. They don't want something to come in out of the blue. Nobody does. Because that would indicate that would in, that would mean they were not in control, and it would mean there was a fault within their life which they hadn't experienced or noticed, and that is incredibly damaging for a person to kind of go through. It's like when you've you've been in something for so long, and then suddenly it changes, and you you never saw that change coming. That's that's a very hard thing to deal with. So the whole idea of presenting someone with something and saying, hey, this is a new way of thinking, and this is this, and you've been doing it wrong for however many freaking years, that's instantly going to get a negative reaction. That's, you know, that's just human nature. There's no way of avoiding that. So you've got to, you've got to think like a salesperson, as bad as it sounds, as awful as advertising is. You've got to think like a salesperson. You've got to think. How do you get through to that point where they would want to experience a change? Or how do you how do you take your idea and look at your idea from the outside and think Yes, there's a there's an in here. There's a way for me to describe this to other people that they could relate to, rather than just throwing it at them and saying you you're wrong. It could be the best idea in the world. It could be the most worthwhile cause ever to have existed in humanity. And still, if it is presented wrong, it will just not work. And again, it boils down to that line. You can't tell someone to feel bad and expect them to. Because that's not how we interpret information. 
that's really boring. You've got to have that time around it. And I want you, I want everyone to consider this. If you listen to this, I'm, I want you to consider this. Whatever your background, wherever you come from, you've got to have an idea of change. And it's the same with politics, religion, sociology, everything. If someone doesn't want to change, you've got to change that first. You have to convince them that there is better. Which is hard, especially when there is going to be a period of worse, especially for a lot of lives, especially if you're trying to introduce a massive change. Politics is a great example of this. I discussed at the very start of the year with my brother. Um, you can go back and watch that podcast. Uh, the whole idea of partisan voting and this idea that you vote for... A lot of people will vote for their, along party lines. Regardless of the policies, they will vote along party lines. Or regardless of what they, they actually think, they will vote along their parents' lines. And that's a great example of it, is, is that you have this idea of politics and this, this, whole, this whole post moment where in order to get someone to change political view, they have to want to change political view. They have to want to adjust that within their lives. And if they've not really seen a negative effect from having their, po their view in their lives to their lives, they're never going to want to change that. Because why would you? If you were winning and you'd never seen a negative impact, it wouldn't make sense to you to change that, would it? Sad, and that's the thing. And that's the whole premise of a whole of the political party saying, well, no, the way you're doing it, yes, you're winning, but everyone else is losing. That's an incredibly hard, uh, hard ideal to present to someone. Because no one would want to be convinced that they've been hurting someone. No one would want to be convinced that they have gone out of their way and damaged other people and that other people have been suffering whilst they've prospered. That's not an idea someone wants to be shown. So you have to think around the idea. You have to think, how can I look at this and say, your life is the way you've lived it and other people have been suffering. And I think we can do both. And by the way, there is ways we could do both. Just throwing that out there as my political opinion. And it's that fractured idea. You can't force change into a mind. This isn't Inception. It's very rare someone has an epiphany moment and thinks, oh yeah, damn, I gotta go do that. So just maybe think about that. Consider that as a, a thought... There's a spider cock crawling across my wall. When you next have an idea, when you next want to present something, is it's no use just sitting there saying no. It's no use sitting there and asking someone or telling someone that they're wrong. You have to present them with a rounded idea. And there will be people who will just completely ignore that idea. There will be people who will, regardless of how you present an idea, fight it, because those are people who are looking for conflict. Those are people who are looking to be proven right. They want to expend some energy. They want to get some catharsis going on. And, and the way to do that is to argue and fight and vent. And, and that's a whole other conversation to do with podcasts and relationships. Um, but that happens outside of relationships. It happens just in the general day-to-day. -day. It happens in the workplace. You will find someone who just wants to argue. Because if they argue, even if they lose, they feel like a hero. They feel validated. And... That's something which, you know, other people have to deal with. But it's something to consider. If you have an idea and a thought and and an opinion that you can't, you shouldn't get upset or you should try not to get upset. I know it's hard. I shouldn't say shouldn't. Um, you should try hard not to get upset when someone doesn't agree and someone doesn't change because of your opinion or what you've presented them. Because it is struggle. It's a struggle from both sides. It's a struggle to instigate change in your own life, and it's a struggle to try and suggest change to someone else. And that's that's a huge part of just you know existing as human beings and communicating as a community.
just something to think about. And I hope you will. I'm still watching a spider on my bed. I'm gonna call him Keith. He's having a little. Sorry, thoroughly distracted. I shall talk to you guys later. Have a great day. Bye.